Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day five of the Halloween Craft Countdown where I'm sharing 20 brand new Halloween paper craft projects to make with your Cricut over 20 days. Today's project is this coffin shaped card and if I hold it up to the camera you can see it's got lots of layers of card in it. We start with a dark version of a colour and get lighter and lighter as it goes in to draw the eye to the centre of the card and then the very top layer is a black one with this spooky skull and raven pattern on it. This design is included with today's download, but I've also included a separate version which doesn't have these pictures in the middle, it's just got the black frame around the edge. So for part one of this video, we'll be making the pre-made card, this one here, and then for part two, I'll show you how you could create your own designs using that blank template. Before we get started, I just want to apologise in advance for my voice in this video. I have been suffering from a little bit of cold for a few days, quite a while now, um, and unfortunately it has gone right to my throat and my nose, so I'm not sounding great. I've been trying to just wait for it to go away before recording these videos, um, but at the time of recording this, it's actually less than one week to go until the start of the Halloween countdown, so I really need to get them done. I've run out of time where I can just wait until I'm sounding normal again. Um, but hopefully you can still follow along. It might just sound a little bit weird. And there are a couple of videos throughout the countdown where I will be sounding a little bit different than usual, but the rest of those videos are all towards the end of the countdown. So for the next few days, I'm gonna be sounding right as rain, but today's video and a couple of those ones towards the end, not so much. Luckily, I seem to have got past the worst of it, but the uh, frog in my throat is not leaving. But anyway, <laughs> I've just given you that little overview as to why this might sound a little bit odd compared to my normal videos. Let's get started at making this Halloween coffin card. The files for this project are free for the next 24 hours. Here's how to download them. Register a free ticket for the Halloween Craft Countdown at craftwithsarah.com forward slash hcc24. After registering, you'll get an email which contains a link to the schedule page for the countdown. Visit the schedule page to find and download today's files. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you've missed some, check out the Instant Access Bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC24 bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Halloween Craft Countdown, plus loads of extra bonus designs. The download comes in a zip folder. You will need to unzip this before uploading the SVG files into Cricut Design Space. This is what the coffin card looks like when loaded into Cricut Design Space. You'll notice that there are two SVG files included. One is the one for this card and the other one has the word blank in the file name and that's the one where you can add your own picture into the front of the card which I'll show you how to do in the second part of this video. This design is nice because it comes all ready to cut. The only thing you may wish to do is to add a score line down the middle of the card. To do that, click on the design and ungroup it by pressing the ungroup button at the top of the layers panel. Then you can drag the base card out over to one side to make it easier to see. Go into shapes and choose a score line and then we're going to drag it a little bit bigger and you might need to do it a little bit more. You're aiming for it to be just bigger than where the two kind of coffin shapes join in the middle. Drag a box around both of those and then press align and then centre um, horizontally. <laughs> I was trying to work out my horizontal and my vertical then. So that will put it exactly in the middle. You can see I actually had it pretty spot on. I'll just move it way out the way to make that more obvious. So click a box around them, align, and then centre horizontally. And that'll put it right in the middle. It doesn't matter that the score line's a little bit bigger than the gap that it's going to be scoring on, it will still cut it out properly. Select both of those again and press the attach button at the bottom of the layers panel to tell the Cricut where to do that score line. And then if you want to, you can go arrange, centre back to move it back to the bottom and just drag it into place. And that's all you need to do for this card. So super easy, just go ahead and press make and it will separate out all the colours. I wanted to create a kind of ombre gradient effect, which is why there are four different shades of the same colour. If you don't have four shades of the same colour, you can do it in whatever colour you want to do. Um, 
we're going to try and move all this onto one sheet by clicking the three dots and then move object because these two will be cut from the same colour. I don't... Oh, so close. It's not quite going to work. Oh, I thought I could get that done on one sheet, but sadly not. Maybe if I rotate? No, I think that made it worse. All right, I'm going to press cancel and just start that again. That is a shame. If you're using 12 by 12 card, that would have worked, but not for A4. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get everything cut out. And I will need two sheets of my palest purple, but everything else will fit onto one and then one sheet of black. And then we'll see how to stick together the card. However, one thing I do just want to say before I go into that is that this isn't a standard size card. It's seven inches tall, so you could put it in a five by seven inch envelope, but it'll be a little bit big on the width. The width of your finished card will be um, 4.3 and a little bit. If you'd like to make a custom envelope that will perfectly fit your card, check out the schedule page for the Halloween Craft Countdown, and then within there is a foundation learning section near the top of the page. Keep reading through there until you get to the link which is on how to um, use my free envelope SVGs and resize them to fit any card. So you can download those SVGs and those are available always so they don't expire after 24 hours. And the tutorial for that shows you how to size them to fit different shaped cards than normal. So it it will show you how you can make the perfect size envelope for this card. Here are all the pieces of my card cut out for my cardstock and I've laid the bits one on top of the other to check that I'm happy with the colours and how it's looking with them all going lighter as they go deeper inside that coffin shape. I'll be putting this together with a combination of glue and foam squares. The glue I'm using is Barely Art Glue, but I also like Kalal, and I buy both of these on Amazon. I really like these glues because they don't bend or wrinkle the cardstock like some glues can do. The foam squares I'm using are from Dot and Dab, but any will do. If yours are big, you'll probably need to cut them quite small with a pair of scissors because they'll be going underneath the pieces in the black layer. But we'll start at the very bottom. Here it is with the base card and fold it down that score line. And I've used textured cards, so it's a little bit harder to see where that score line is. But there we go. And if you're wondering why we've got another shape on the same colour, it's because this is going to be stuck over the top to continue that shape on the left hand side. So it's going to cover up where we've got the score line where it's not quite the right shape and then go over the top. So for this one, it will be easiest to put the glue on the base card because if you were to glue the back of the whole shape, you might accidentally put some glue where it's not going to have anything behind it. Whereas by gluing this instead, it means that, um, all the bits that need glue will have glue. <laughs> kind of lost track of my own sentence there. You can line this up along the bottom and the right hand side. It will overlap on the left. So that's how it looks from the back. You've just got that little triangle bit coming out over the score line. And it opens up nicely. Next, I'm going to stick on all the purple layers and we're going with the lightest at the bottom. Unless, of course, you change the colours in Design Space, in which case go with whatever you changed it to. So next is this one. It's the one you've got left that's got the smallest hole in the middle. You see this one's got the smallest, next will be the middle, and then the one with the biggest. And now it will be easier to glue onto the back of the pieces that you're about to stick on, so that you don't um, get glue into that middle section. This is exactly the same size as the card now, so it's easy to line up. There. And then the next shade, which for me is this one. And my last purple piece on top. For the final piece, which is the black one with the pictures in, you can either glue it on top or you can do what I'm going to do and use some foam squares to give it a bit of dimension. So let's move that out of the way, turn this upside down, bring on my foam squares. 
I'm hoping these will fit. They do just about. Amazing. If they didn't, I would have had to cut them smaller with some scissors. You want to make sure you've got a good amount of these around the edge, so we'll get a really strong, firm stick when this goes on the card. Then as well as putting some around the edge, I'm also going to put some in these middle bits of the images to make sure they've got the same amount of height to them as the edges. I'm trying to be really careful not to make any of these foam squares go outside the edge of the card, otherwise you'll be able to see them. And you also want to make sure that none of them go over any of the holes in the middle. Again, because if they do, that means you'll be able to see them which we don't want. You can buy black foam squares, which might look a little bit better for this card, but um, I don't have any to hand right now. It just means that if any did kind of show through on the sides, if you were looking at this card from the side, um, then the foam squares would show as black instead of white, but they're not really gonna show up anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. But if you happen to have black foam squares, in your craft stash, it might be an idea to use them. Okay, nearly there. <laughs> I'd always rather have a few too many on there than not enough. All right, that's looking good. So now I can peel the tops off to reveal the stickiness underneath. All right, I'm gonna line this up with the edges and then gently drop it down. The reason for gently dropping it is that if I wasn't happy with the position, I could pick it up and move it because it hasn't actually stuck yet. It's just sort of placed on top. But that is actually looking like it's lined up well, so I can push down to stick. And there we have it. My Halloween coffin card is all finished. And as I said, if you want to make a custom envelope for this, check out the foundation learning section of this craft countdown. There's a link to a separate tutorial in there with some free envelope SVGs. And the tutorial goes through how to size it to fit any shape card. So that's how to make this pre-made design that I've provided for you. The download folder also contains a blank version with no pictures in the middle so that you could create your own. So let's jump back into design space and see how to do that. Here's what the blank version of the coffin card looks like. You can see it's pretty much the same, except instead of the picture over the front, we've just got a thin black outline instead. Separate that out by clicking the design and pressing the ungroup button at the top of the layers panel. You can then click and drag that top layer away so that we've got a nice clear space to work with. You can use any SVGs that you upload to Design Space or you can use the ones within Cricut Design Space or Cricut Access. That's what I'm going to be using just to make sure everything's in one place. When you go into Cricut, if you do have the Cricut Access membership, then you can find any of the images in here to use. To make it easier to find suitable images for this particular project, under Operation Type, tick the box that says Cut, and then scroll down and under Image Layers, change it to Single. And then you can search for whatever it is you want. I'll just go Halloween for now. You need to choose images where all of the pieces are touching. So for example, this heart with all the pictures in it would not be a good one to choose because none of those bits are touching each other. So when you try and cut that out from cardstock, it's all going to fall apart. The same would be true of this face here and also these text ones. However, this text one, this Happy Halloween, all the letters are touching. So that would be a good one. You can click it to see it in more detail and press add to canvas. Or if you don't want to go to that screen and to make it a bit quicker, you can just click the plus icon to put it on your project. So I'm going to just have a look through, choose some images, and then I'll show you how to put them all together. So I'm probably going to be quite fussy at choosing my images. I'm going to pause the video, get these images selected, and then we'll move on to the next step. Here are all the images that I've chosen. I don't think I'll need to use them all, but I kind of find it's easy to have a few too many to choose from, and then you can just delete the ones you don't use at the end. I want this Happy Halloween to be the focal point and to make it easier to see where the outline will be I'm going to change the outline colour to a nice bright colour and then start rearranging and resizing. It can be helpful to zoom in with the button down here and then use the scroll bars 
Now, if you want to see what this is going to look like when it is joined on to the outline, you can drag it below the outline in the layers panel. So you can see at the moment this doesn't actually look like it says Halloween because these little edge bits will be cut off. So I would need to just change that about a bit so that it becomes readable. You want to make sure everything is either joined to the, oops, click the wrong one, either joined to the edge of the blue or join to one of the other pictures so that when this is cut out, it will all cut out as one piece. I think I want the witch to be featured fairly heavily, so I'll put her quite large. Don't worry if any bits are going outside the edge, like the broomstick tail is here. We can fix that at the end when we're happy with how everything else is looking. Got my little pumpkin. Join that on. Hmm. I try flipping it. Have that down there. So it doesn't have to be connected to the witch as long as it's connected to the blue. And then I've got some more cats. Move them a bit closer so they're easier to work with. So I sort of need a long thin one for the top. There, so that's touching the letters and his ear and his back is touching the blue, so that's okay. And then let's have my little floaty ghost in next to the witch. If I was doing this for real, I would be taking a lot more time on this. Um, but I'm going to just rush through it a little bit quick so you're not sat here watching me for ages. Now you'll notice on this one I'm trying to select the ghost, but it's clicking the witch instead. It's because the witch is higher up than the ghost in the layers panel. So to change that, just drag the ghost ahead and then it will let you select it. He sort of looks like he's chasing the witch and he's about to sort of slap her hat off. <laughs> All right, got another cat. I think that would look nice in there. Don't think I'll be able to fit these ones on. There's a bit of empty space there though that I don't really like. Maybe I can duplicate the ghost. Add another one. There we go, now I've joined the witch and the text to that ghost, so it's going to cut, cut a little bit better, because that'll all be joined on, it'll be easier to stick. When you think you're happy with how it's all looking, drag a box around everything, and then press combine and unite. That'll join it all together into one single layer, and when you change the colour to something lighter, you'll be able to see all the cut lines. So from this point, you'd be able to tell if there was anything that wasn't touching anything else or anything you wanted to move. You can move things about in a Unite by clicking the arrow, choosing what you want to move. Then you can either move it, resize it, uh, rotate it, whatever you want to do. And when you click away, it will redo that Unite. However, we do need to break this apart again to cut off the bits that are going out around the edge. So we'll click. When you're happy with how everything is looking, this is your last chance to change it. So get, all, get it looking exactly as you want it now because you won't be able to tweak it later. It might be a good idea to make a copy of this at this point where you've still got all the images separate and just hide that copy so you can come back to it in the future if you need it. But for now, I'll click on this one and go combine and then undo Unite to separate them all out again. It doesn't give you your original colours back, so I just change that outline. And then let's bring the outline to the front with a range bring to front. You can see now I've got lots of little bits that are going to need to be cut off. Let's delete those cats, don't need them. And then to get these bits off, we're going to use the slice tool. But first we'll join all the pictures together. So click one of them in the layers panel, press shift on your keyboard and go down till you've got all the pictures selected, but do not select the outline, just the pictures to go in the middle. Press combine and weld to join them together. So now this is just one layer and I'll have to drag my outline to the top again. Then go into shapes and choose a square and make it a color that's different to anything that you've got so far and then resize this and position it so that it's covering up one of the sides and all the bits going out over the edge. It could go into the black, that's fine, but don't go into the middle of the coffin like that. Just keep it sort of overlapping the black. And then you can duplicate this, rotate, resize as many times as you need to until any other bits that are overhanging. Oops, didn't mean to do that. 
<laughs> and so any other bits that are overhanging are covered up. I just need one more for there. All right, so now I can join all those rectangles together. Choose one of the layers panel, press shift and click the other ones. Keep that shift key held while you're clicking them and then go combine weld to join them into one layer. The reason we're joining them and we, why we join the pictures is because we're going to use the slice tool and that only lets you select two layers. So I can select my yellow and my blue and then the slice key lights up so I can press slice and that cuts the yellow out of the blue. So I can now delete my yellow, see what it's done here and then it's cut all the outside bits off. So I can just delete that by pressing the delete key on the keyboard or you can click the trash can. Then select the outline and the pictures and press combine weld. And let's join them into one. Again, I'm going to change it back to a lighter color just to show you that you'll probably end up with lots of little pieces that are too small for the Cricut to cut. For example, this bit in the back of the cat, this little bit next to the N and a little bit in the foot. And then there's one here. To get rid of those, click your layer and press the contour button down the bottom right of the screen. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and then you can click into them because it puts the smallest ones at the bottom. Close out of that and now they're gone. This is now all ready for me to cut out. So let's change it back to black. Here we go. And then I can move it back into position up here. At this point, it's a really good idea to save your project. And if you're going to be cutting it out now, then if you have a scoring stylus or wheel, you can add your score line to the base card, just like we did at the beginning of this video for the one with the pre-made pattern. I hope that you enjoyed this video on how to make these shaped coffin cards for Halloween, both with this pre-made design and also how to create your own ones using the blank template. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Halloween crafts and card making fun. I hope to see you tomorrow for day six of the Halloween craft countdown, but for now, thank you so much for watching. Bye!